The, the truth is, I have often questioned um, health insurers. I have often questioned the value of health insurers. I have a real problem when I drive up the expressway and I see billboards for health insurers because no one was ever cured at Blue Cross. And I say to myself, what is the value of the money that is being spent by these folks when there is so much pressure today on health care costs? And why is it okay for insurance companies in general to take 10 cents off the top of every dollar for themselves when the amount of reserves that they're building are far greater than what they're paying out in claims? So I do have questions about all insurance companies, and it's a bias that I have that I'll be very clear about. I also knew, remember, I had come from Partners Healthcare. I had come from one of the country's most successful healthcare systems, and I knew what Partners was being paid. And then I came to Tufts, and I opened up the contracts, and they were truly ugly. So I said to them, you can't bulb with me, because I know it's in those uh, contracts across town. And what the insurance companies classically do is they say, you're the most expensive, you're too expensive, your quality's not that good. And I knew that was all a lie. So we danced with Blue Cross on our contract negotiations for a year. And the way it works is when your contracts are up, and the contract cycles usually go in two or three year cycles. When your cycle is up, if you haven't concluded your negotiations, you have to give the insurer an extension. And if you won't give them an extension, then they, by law, must go out and it becomes public. And they have to tell the businesses and consumers that there could be a disruption in their network because they haven't come to an agreement with a provider. Everybody with me on that? So we're negotiating, and we were negotiating with Blue Cross, and I kept giving them one-month extensions. And I finally had enough because, quite honestly, I felt, my team felt, that we were not being dealt with in an above-board manner. However, and this happened at, at about, um, it, it happened in about Christmas time 2008. But I decided I wasn't going to give Blue Cross notice at Christmas because the reporter at the Boston Globe who would have reported it was on vacation. <laughs> and I knew that. And I wanted a particular reporter to have the story. So I waited until January 5th at 9 o'clock in the morning on January 5th. I called the CEO of Blue Cross and I said, Cleve, I'm not going to give you another extension. And he immediately knew what that meant. That meant it had to go public by law. And when you're under extensions, you can continue to keep it below the radar screen and try to behave and act like adults and get it done. But he knew, because I wouldn't do another extension, that by law it was going to have to go public. And I don't think he ever thought that I would do that. Because when I worked for Partners, Partners had all the leverage in the world. It was the Mass General and the Brigham. And at Tufts, I have much, much less leverage. So it was very bold of our team and our board to say, go for it. And you know why? I said to them, our rates with Blue Cross are so low that we cannot sustain this, and we cannot roll over and play dead. So kill me now. That was really it. You know, it was like, you're going to kill me, so just kill me now. And that's why we basically said we are not going to give you another extension. When I told him that we weren't going to give him another extension, he said to me, well, that's very partners-esque of you. <laughs> and I said to him, it's because I kind of did the same job when I was at Partners, only I did it to the Tough Self plan <laughs> at that point. But I said, to, I, I said to him, it's really not. This is legitimate. We have the highest acuity of all academic medical centers in Boston. It's called a case mix index. And essentially what it does is it measures how sick your patients are. And because Tufts is small in comparison to the Brigham and the Mass General and the other big hospitals in the city, it's about a half of the size of the Brigham. It's about a third of the size of the General. So because we're small, our beds are not filled with hips and knees and gallbladders. Our beds are filled with bone marrow transplants and very sick babies in our neonatal intensive care unit. We tend to see a very high acuity. And when you divide up all the numbers, it really means that our acuity of our patients at Tufts is the highest in the city of Boston. And the only place that's higher is the Dana-Farber. But as you all know, the Dana-Farber is not a full-service hospital. It's a very tiny hospital that does almost no inpatient care uh, today. So of all the teaching hospitals in Boston, our acuity is the highest. We do more heart transplants at Tufts than anybody else in New England, little known fact. So I said, we have a very, very high case mix, and we have a 
very low cost because you've starved us for years. And our quality metrics, based on the data that Blue Cross gave us from their database, was among the highest in the state. I said, nobody else has a tripartite metric like that. High acuity, high quality, low cost. That's a beautiful thing. So I said to him, we're, we're going to take this risk, and we're going to do this. And we were ready. They weren't. And essentially, what we did was within a half an hour, we had a website, up, web, website prepared and up. And there were notices in all of our physician offices. And we sent out notices to thousands of patients that their care could be disrupted. Now, it was not our goal to put patients in the middle. And I resented greatly that Blue Cross said that we did, because it was because of Blue Cross that we had to do this. Um, long story short, and there were many subplots to this, uh, we were in meltdown essentially for 12 days. And um, through the back door, a, an executive at Blue Cross called an executive on my team who knew each other and were relatively friendly and invited us back to the table. And uh, as, as many of you may remember from, that, from when that happened, it was front page news in the Globe. Uh, the whole t the, the, while we were in meltdown. It was being uh, monitored by the Globe every day. And my team and I went to the editorial board in the Globe. And we laid out our argument, highest acuity, lowest cost. And we showed them that we're the solution, not the problem. And that the fact is that high quality, low cost providers should be fed, not starved. Because if we want to try to manage health care costs in the Commonwealth, we shouldn't be just be making the more expensive guys more expensive and starving the lower ones out of business. And the Globe editorial board got it. And in the middle of a global meltdown, they wrote an editorial that said, do not do this, Blue Cross. And I think it kind of blew Blue Cross away. And we were very proud that in the middle of a global meltdown, we were asking for more money. And the Globe actually supported it. It was extremely helpful uh, when that happened. But I'll tell you, the amount of preparation it took for us to get ready for this and to do it. No one should ever, ever underestimate when you get ready to do something very bold how ready you have to be. Mm -hmm. And everybody has to be singularly focused. And it was truly all hands on deck. Every executive I had, it didn't matter what their day job was. Everybody was focused on what we were doing. and what our We had to have 800 lines up to deal with consumer questions. We had to deal with small businesses and other businesses. There were the, the communications method to deal with something like this was enormous. So uh, Larry Backhow, in his office, uh, hosted a meeting between the CEO of Blue Cross, my board chairman, and me and one or two others um, to talk about this. We were about nine, ten days in. And you needed to know the people, after we were invited back to the table to negotiate, there were negotiation sessions that went on all night. And I would get calls every few hours about where we were. And it was just unbelievable. We were almost there, then the whole thing fell apart. And we were almost there, the whole thing fell apart. And this was going on for days. The night before we were meeting in Larry's office, uh, my negotiators kept calling me and saying, it's important to Blue Cross before tomorrow morning when you meet, that they feel that you feel, Ellen, there's enough money on the table. Is there enough money on the table? And finally, around midnight, there was. And I said, but there are eight other very important negotiated items that are non-financial that have to be nailed down. Otherwise, this contract's not going to close. So the next morning, we all met in Larry's office. He said, let's get it out of the hospital. Let's get it out of Blue Cross. So he said, bring it to the Tufts campus. And he has one of these presidential, university presidential offices with big ceilings and big curtains. And it was very august. And we were sitting there. And essentially, Larry opened up the conversation. It was a management moment in my career. And he said, you know, Tufts University graduates more primary care physicians than Harvard, BU, and UMass combined. And he said, Harvard Univers uh, Tufts University graduates more primary care physicians who practice in eastern Massachusetts, who stay and practice here, than Harvard, BU, or UMass. And he said, so this is far more than a meltdown between a hospital and a health plan. He said, if something happens to my hospital, this will affect the pipeline of physicians in eastern Massachusetts forever. I, I just, oh, I'm going to jump across the table <laughs> and hug this man. I mean, it was just an unbelievable moment. And then my board chair at the time, who at the time was the CEO at Sovereign Bank, looked up and said, you know, we know everybody on your board. And I did. I do know everybody on, on the Blue Cross board. And 
He said, they can run, but they can't hide. And every single day, every one of us is going to be out at some function in the city where we're going to see them. And they will know that they damaged one of America's great medical schools and one of America's great hospitals, and they were the solution, not the problem. It was a beautiful thing. I have to tell you, it was truly a management moment. So he then, the CEO at Blue Cross said, is there enough money? I said, yeah, there is, but we're not done. I said, we're not done. And I'm not going to close the contract until the non-financial issues are negotiated. So I said, to, this was on Friday morning. The negotiators had been negotiating all of Thursday night. And I said to the CEO, you and I need to stay close on the phone all day. And if this thing derails, we'll get on the phone and put it back on track. And he said, mm, go and skiing. So I just said to myself, well, you know. So we went into, I stayed in my office till 2.30, which was Saturday morning, really. And that's when it closed, 2.30 in the morning. And this was 9 a.m. Friday morning, and it was really 2.30 a.m. Saturday morning. The whole thing was a management moment.